Morning, guys. Morning, morning, morning. How are you all this morning? Parcival and I are doing absolutely wonderful. If you hear any loud noises, I have a big blanket in the washer. Hence why Parcival is currently where he's at. Because he does not like all the noise that the washing machine is making. But I wanted to see this new series that I'm thinking about doing and doing a trial run of it and see what you guys thought of it. What do you think, Parcival? Do you think we should tell them about the new series we're going to do? So one of my bookshelves is completely full with cookbooks. And some of them are some pretty cool and some pretty unique cookbooks. So I was like, how much fun would it be to pick a cookbook Talk about the cookbook, pick a recipe from said cookbook, and make it together. I think that would be just so much fun. And it's getting into the fall time and the holiday time. I have a couple of specifically holiday cookbooks. Um, I'm looking at one really cool Southern Living Christmas cookbook from like 20 years ago. So, super fun. And, of course, I've got a couple that are themed after books that I love and I have this one that I've never made anything out of yet it is the Outlander Kitchen cookbook you guys know I've talked about it before I think I showed it to you when I got it and isn't that amazing Percival what should mommy make we're gonna make something out of it I'm gonna look through it I'm gonna show you a couple of recipes and we're gonna decide what we're gonna make this week okay so come along and let's pick out something to make from Outlander's Kitchen. So one of my absolute favorite, favorite things about Teresa Carl Sanders' Outlander Kitchen is the little excerpts that she puts in the chapters that are straight from the book. So this is from The Drums of Autumn. And it said, the food was either terribly bad or terribly good, Claire had said, describing her adventures in the past. That's because the, that's because there's no way of keeping things. Anything you eat has either been salted or preserved in lard. If it ha isn't half rancid, or else it's fresh off the hoof or out of the garden, in which case it can be bloody marvelous. So that's her talking about food through the history that she's lived through so yeah well let's jump in and let's see if we can find a really fun recipe for our first cookbook as well as excerpts from the book at the beginning of each chapter each recipe also tells you where it comes from this is hot broth from castle leosh i'm not making that but it shows you where she has it in it in the very first Outlander book, Outlander, when she first arrives at Castle Lioche. One of my favorite things about food is that you can have one food that is called so many different things. So in this book, because it is obviously from a old English time frame, it's called Potato Fritters. But what I would call this, and what I've grown up calling this, is a potato pancake and it is just shredded potato with onion a little bit of egg and flour and salt and you fry it we are coming up on soup season and a couple of these sound amazing the kale broths with bacon and the drunken mock turtle soup honestly sound so good ooh cream of non-toxic mushroom soup so let's look through these and see what we can find. So the drunken mock turtle soup has quite an impressive ingredient list. So we're most likely not doing that, but I do want to do that soon. Looks amazing. The cream of non-toxic mushroom has a much more reasonable ingredient list. It's from a breath of snow and ashes. Only question I have is whether or not my crew will eat it. They're not massive mushroom fans. So, we're going to keep looking. Murtaugh's gift to Ellen is a... We're going to add this to our possibilities. My family loves asparagus. 
They're super cute and they are a huge part of the book. If you've read Outlander about her boar tusks. There were a lot of main dishes as well, but we're going to skip those for the moment. We will do a main soon. But I wanted to look at some of these side dishes. One that immediately grabbed my eye was the broccoli salad, as well as the honey roasted butternut squash. Because those are two things that my household eats a lot of. As well as the buttered leeks, because I've never seen or had buttered leeks. So let's take a look. So the buttered leek recipe comes from Dragonfly and Amber, and she talks about having buttered leeks in the chapter called Thy Brother's Keeper. And it's a fairly simple recipe. Just take six to eight leeks and some butter, some thyme, some salt, and pepper. It's a pretty simple recipe. If I'm not mistaken, I think you can do leeks in the fall. Might be one to look into. Here is the broccoli salad recipe. It is from A Breath of Snow and Ashes from Flora McDonald's Barbecue. So this is going to be more from the Revolutionary War time frame. And it's a cup of mayonnaise and a half a cup of sugar and white vinegar, broccoli, cauliflower, bacon and onion, which are new to our recipe, and cheddar cheese and some cranberry. I think we may definitely do this one because I already know my family likes broccoli salad and it's a fairly straightforward recipe for us to do for our first one. I found this in the dessert section, humble crumble apple pie from the Fiery Cross, and it was already bookmarked, so that means I've been wanting to make it for a while. So yeah, we might make this. So this is one I think my husband would really like, so I'm going to add it to our options, and that's Jim Gems bread pudding with maple butterscotch sauce. This is from A Breath of Snow and Ashes, so it's going to be Revolutionary War time frame. A um, little long on the ingredient list, but they're not uncommon ingredients. They're things I would have around the house. Mm -hmm. And it looks absolutely delicious. Okay, thanks for being patient with me, you guys. While I looked through all of the amazing things that are options, I'm going to now go, I'm going to try to use my tech savviness and do a screen recording and a spin. I'm gonna put some of our favorites from in the cookbook onto a wheel, and we're gonna spin the wheel, and I'm hopefully gonna have a screen recording for you guys of me spinning the wheel, and we're gonna make whatever the wheel lands on. If I cannot figure this screen recording out, we're just gonna show a screenshot of what it lands on, okay? Cool, all right. All right, guys, so the wheel is spoken. We're making gems for bread pudding with that maple sauce. It's going to make a huge sheet pan. We're only three in this house, so we may be taking it to our friends as well. Oh, Odin just came over and gave me a headbutt. He said, we're going to check the ingredient list. Maybe he can have some of gems bread pudding. But, yeah, looks like we're making it. So let's go to the grocery store and get all of our ingredients and make us some bread pudding from the Outlander kitchen. Hey there! It's been a while since we've been at Stephanie's house. So we're back at Stephanie's house to make this bread pudding. I did not take you to the grocery store with me because I only needed two items. And that was walnuts instead of pecans and um, sourdough bread. And right now, Stephanie is just cutting the crust off of our sourdough bread, so let me show you. So the recipe calls for one pound of crustless cut up bread. We have a beautiful sourdough loaf that I got at Kroger last night. And we're just gonna go ahead and cut that all up. And then we're gonna mix in our crushed walnuts and we're gonna start working on our liquid ingredients. This is just really just follow the Outlander cookbook if you have access to it. There's a million recipes in it. 
and I'm going to show you kind of what we're doing, but we're tweaking it a little bit to fit what we like, like the choice of walnuts instead of pecans. We like pecans, but they're about twice as expensive oh, well, here in cheaper. our area. <laughs> so for whatever reason. And that doesn't make sense because pecans are grown here in Georgia. Exactly. So they should be dirt cheap, but you know. For whatever reason, they want to double the price. You missed the whole bottom layer of that bread. I'm going to get it. Thank you. Okay. It's um, all gone. <laughs> we um, just got walnuts instead for price reasonings. But um, let's take you along and show you how we're going to kind of tweak this recipe. Also, a half a cup of whiskey is going to be an option for this recipe. You're not going to see us put it in. But you can definitely put a half a cup of whiskey in with your wet ingredients and it will just be gorgeous. But we're not going to we're not going to do that. So even though we have a huge bottle of Kraken like right there in the <laughs> shot. Is that whiskey? I don't think Kraken is whiskey. I have some. No, whiskey. Kraken is rum. I was going to say I have some friends who'd have been able to answer that. He might, he might have just bought some Jameson last night. Might have some. Oh, snap. Do we put Jameson in the bread? Let's see. All right, so we're gonna put some beautiful apples in there. We already put our walnuts in there. And now we're gonna put some apples in there. And it said the recipe, once again, we're doing it Frida and Mert's way. The recipe said dried apples. We're just gonna put some regular apples in there. We have a little less liquid because we're not doing a whole half cup of the whiskey. So we're not really worried. We'll pat them dry with a paper towel a little bit and they're gonna be fine. So yeah, we're putting some fresh apple, about a cup and a half. So we have assembled all of our dry ingredients, apples, walnuts, sourdough bread. Now we're gonna melt down some butter and mix it with the wet ingredients and the brown sugar and get it all into a beautiful mush. Okay, we're working on our wet ingredients. We just added a stick of butter to this combination to get it wet. This is a cup of brown sugar, a half a cup of maple syrup, two whole eggs, two egg yolks. Now we're going to go ahead and add in um, a little bit of whiskey, probably just like a shot or two, not a whole half cup. We don't need that, Jesus. And then we are going to season with cinnamon, nutmeg, ginger to taste. To this mixture, we're gonna add two and a half cups of milk and one cup of heavy cream. Okay, so you're gonna mix your solid ingredients with your wet ingredients. You're gonna mix it really good. Then I'm gonna put it in a um, buttered or sprayed, however you choose to do it, baking dish. I'm gonna put some cinnamon on the top of this and then we're gonna bake it at 350 and we're gonna make the glaze or the sauce, the butterscotch sauce. So I topped ours with some additional cinnamon because we love cinnamon around here. But you can also top it with some leftover nuts if you didn't put them all in your mix. Whatever you want to top it with. Um, it's going to go one hour till golden brown at 350. And then you, before you put the glaze or the, the sauce on it, you're going to let it cool for a full 30 minutes. So we'll see you an hour and a half from now. Y'all, I wish there was smell-o-vision because this sm this house smells like the folliest fall that's ever falled. It smells so freaking good in here right now. It's insane. It looks so beautiful. It smells like fall vibes. I cannot wait. You have to let it rest 30 minutes shake it again so you, they can see. You have to let it rest 30 minutes and I think it's because it is wobbly still. This is the first time I've ever made a bread pudding. So we're gonna let it rest. And I know it's supposed to be pudding-y. It's not supposed to be hard like a cake. So I'll let you know how it tastes. But if, if you could smell it, it's beautiful and it smells amazing. So it looks amazing. It tastes amazing. I already tried to bite and I thoroughly give it two thumbs up. So glad we tried it until next month when we try something from the Harry Potter cookbook. Love y'all.